What safety precautions should I take when treating for emerald ash borer? Or plan the treatment for a day when storms are not forecast, but when you do have good soil moisture to help with the translocation process, moving the material throughout the tree. Where are the personal protective equipment that the label requires if you are doing the treatment? Keep kids and pets away from the treatment area until the grass dries or until the certified applicator gives you the all clear. The next thing you want to do is assess underneath the tree's drip line to see if there's any potential problems there. First would be, is there a hard surface present, such as a sidewalk, a driveway, or the street? Is there a storm drain present? Is there some kind of surface water, like a stream, a pond, or a creek, or is there a wellhead nearby? If so, please do not use a soil applied method or a basal trunk spray. The insecticide, although unlikely, could be moved off-site in the hours following treatment by leaching or runoff from a heavy rainfall event. Also, there are flowering shrubs or vegetable gardens or perennials underneath that tree. If there are, again, don't use a soil applied method because the roots of these plants could pick up the systemic insecticide and move it to the pollen and nectar of their flowers. We do not want to harm our pollinators or other non-target insects by any EAB treatments. If there are any conflicting circumstances under your ash tree, perhaps the best solution for a treatment would be the trunk injection to minimize harm to the environment and also to protect your ash tree. When making a determination whether to treat your trees to protect them from emerald ash borer, the very first place to begin is to determine if you have an ash or not. So put down the newspaper, head out to the yard, and these are some tips that you might use to, to, to identify your, your trees.